Hi folks, in this short video segment, I'm going to show you how to use the apply, uh, how to use and apply a remote torque icon loads uh, in 3D Experience Release 2022X. And this, I'm going to apply it for both shell element and solid element model. Now, this is not something that is advanced for, you know, uh, uh, very much unknown. It's just that if you're an, if you're an Abacus user, you know uh, how to do this, or possibly if you're an Xperia user, you know how to 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 use it. But the the names are maybe the names are different, and the icons, of course, and uh, uh, are different. So if you're, if you're new to 3D experience, uh, uh, your previous knowledge of Abacus or Katia may not help you to to employ or basically get to this uh, remote uh, remote torque uh, icon. And I have already done a video for remote force icon, but uh, this, this goes with the remote tool. Now, uh, the, the icon for remote torque looks like this. So it looks like a moment or a torque applied at dot, 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 which means at the distance, remote. And I'm going to explain it in the context of a very simple model. The geometry is simple so that we don't have to get bogged down with uh, complicated uh, parts. So it's a cantilever beam. One end of it is clamped. The other end is applied is subject to an applied moment. Now, this last 15 millimeters is very rigid. So when you apply a moment, there's no stresses developed in it because it's very rigid compared to the, the one on the left. And therefore, uh, uh, it does not even have to be modeled. And that's the whole idea of, of uh, uh, not modeling the entire geometry, but only the points that, or only the parts that are, that are important, the portions that are important. The cross section is given here, standard, uh, standard, uh, uh, standard uh, uh, steel properties. I just noticed that there is a mistake here. Uh, the, there is no F. There is no F. This F is inherited from the previous video that I did, where I apply a force at this end. So for, please for, uh, forget about this. Okay, there is no such a thing, and uh, the moment is 50 newton meter. So this should be F moment equal to 50 newton meter that, that's fine that's fine uh, and here is the place where uh, remote torque icon appears so when you, you try to apply a force or a moment you have the option of doing the uh, obviously the force and or torque or remote force and remote torque and that's the video the current video segment is about this remote remote torque okay so uh, what i've done here redrawn this thing but uh, drawn the free, the free body diagram, if I separated these two pieces from each other, uh, the only thing that keeps it in equilibrium is moment, 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 okay? So basically, this is the problem that I have to do. I don't have to model that entire right-hand side, okay? And uh, if you look at this elementary strength of material books, uh, you see that the deflection and the maximum stress at the, uh, at the, the at the part, at this part, which is of length L, is given by uh, these expressions. So we're going to compare our results with these. We're not going to model the 50 millimeter, uh, 50 millimeter uh, rigid portion of the part. Now I'm going to do both shell elements and uh, solid elements. First, I'm going to do the solid, and then come back and do the shell. And uh, this is the uh, MathCAD spreadsheet. So these are the numbers that I should be comparing my, my results with. So Deflection at the portion that we're going to model is going to be one and a half millimeter, and the wall stress is going to be 30, uh, 300, me uh, 300, pas 300 megapascal, okay, 3 times 10 to 8 pascal. Now, there is some, uh, I'm going to do the bottom one first, and then we'll do the top one. And this is some help from uh, uh, online documentation of uh, 3D experience. Once again, this is not an advanced thing, it's just that I want to show you how to get to those. Uh, basically uh, features that you're looking for in 3D experience release 2022x. Okay, so let's go. So let's go to uh, part design because we're going to be creating a solid object first. So uh, on that convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch a uh, square 10 millimeter by 10 millimeters uh, long. That's going to be the cross section. 10 mm and 10 mm 
Okay, exit and pass it by uh, 100 millimeters. Uh, 100 millimeter. Now I'm not going to even bother creating a remote point here because because you're applying a remote torque, torque does not have a root root location, and therefore I don't even have to create that point over here. In the previous video when I did the a remote force, because I wanted to apply the remote force at that location, I had to create a point here which is, was going to be later uh, selected as the support of that. Uh, uh, remote force but a torque or a remote torque video right now I don't even need that I it, it won't I can create it but it's not going to be used at all okay so uh, that is the uh, the part 100 millimeter long we are not modeling the last 30 minutes to the right because we're rigid so now we're going to create a material or call it a video or remote uh, torque Okay, now it's going to be created, but it's uh, it's a placeholder. It's blank. There's nothing in it, so I'm going to right-click, apply, and close this. We're going to apply it to our part. Use the check mark, and then we're going to input the values in. So right there, double-click. Okay, so it's going to be structural, uh, abacus faulty physics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic. Uh, 200 gigapascal, 200 big G, P, big G, big P, A, and Poisson ratio 0.3. That's pretty much it. So now let's go to our uh, structure model creation where we're going to mesh. Now, because I have a solid model here, I want to uh, I want to mesh it. I'll use standard. If you have a line or if you have a surface and you wanted to mesh it, you can use. Oh, there's no sense in making using this. This is for 3D models only. So uh, in those cases, I use empty, empty FEM. But here, it's a standard. We can select it. Okay, so first of all, the object to be meshed is right here. And let's see now, parabolic right there. And it's a swept mesh type of mesh that I'm going to do, structured mesh, and five millimeter, five millimeter uh, size. And say, okay, it's going to get meshed. Very really simple. Uh, let me update it right there. There's my mesh. Okay, good. So uh, uh, that's that's all. Auto, the, the property automatically is selected based on the material that I put in there. And now we're going to go to uh, structural model scenario, structural scenario creation, where, I, where you apply this, where you create the step and the load and the restraint and these things. Okay, so we will use our finite element model. Okay, so uh, we go to procedure, static step. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to use the geometric nonlinearity because it's irrelevant to this problem. Okay, now as far as the restraint is concerned, that right side or left side is entirely clamped right there. This is clamped. And the right side, we have a moment applied to it. Now remember, this moment in principle originally was applied at the right side here. You can see the right side of a 150 millimeter long beam, but we are not modeling this. So if you look at your full build diagram, this is what you got. This is what you got. So if you want to do here uh, for load, uh, you can apply a moment torque right there or you can say remote 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 torque and that's the purpose of the present video notice that here you don't even have an option of creating the point the support is right here no problem but it won't give me a location for selecting the re re remote torque okay in the case of remote force it, it allowed me to pick a point down here but I don't have a point and not only that even if I did have a point there is no place to pick it here. So this is the moment about the x-axis, 50, 50 Newton meter. And there we are. Okay. 
Now, uh, if you want, you can look at, uh, to make sure it's, um, this looks kind of weird, but uh, you go to visual visualization management. Don't show me the mesh, just show me the, right, right there, you can see that. Oh, it's right, right there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't still don't like this thing. If you want, you can go to uh, 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 the part and change the transparency there. If you want to look at the graphics transparency, if, if you insist on seeing that there, okay, but that's really not important. That's pretty much it. There's nothing else to do. So we go to simulate. Uh, this is model and scenario check. I'm not going to do that. I suggest you do it if there are any error messages going to pop up here. Same thing here, simulation check. Mine is very straightforward. I know it's going to work. So I go to just simulate. And you'll see that it bends. Uh, and the tip deflection or the maximum deflection is going to be, I believe it has to be 1.5 millimeter. You'll see that because it was here while this is running. It was yeah, 1.5 millimeter, like that. Once, it, once this finishes, I will come and do this thing with uh, shell element. And once again, I want to remind you that these are, these are very basic concepts, but they're not uh, easily accessible if you haven't seen an example. Okay, so experienced Abacus user, experienced Katia user, they know uh, that how to do things like this in their own environment, but uh, 3D experience has its own interface and its own terminology in some cases, in many cases actually, and that's the purpose of these video segments uh, for novice users, obviously. Okay, extracting results. So close this. Uh, what is the one meter stress should be at the wall should be uh, 300 megapascal or 310 to the eight. And I believe it is right, right there. Now, don't let it fool you. Don't let it fool you because if you put the cursor here, see that the values are all 310 to the eight. Just look at the, look at the number on the screen. You can change this thing so that uh, you can change the legend so that it doesn't show you all that stuff there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm basically, uh, you know, if you look at it, uh, this green stuff is green and yeah. So, I mean, all right, you made me do it. So for uh, show me, uh, show me stuff between uh, uh, three e to the eight. And how about, okay, show me anything between, I don't know, maybe, uh, yeah, okay, well, the red stuff, you can see the red stuff is all 3E to the 8. On the top, it's 3E to the 8. Good, good. Cancel. Close. Okay. All right, so uh, we're good here. Uh, let's go and make another model for shell elements. So we go here to... Uh, Uh, we go here and create a, a generative shape design. Okay. And then close these things, but that's okay. So uh, on a convenient plane, on that horizontal plane, I will sketch a rectangle, which is uh, yeah, something like that, uh, 100 millimeters long. 100 mm. And this way, 10 millimeters long. Okay, that's going to be the sheet that I'm going to be modeling. Uh, so exit, go to uh, surface, put a surface to that uh, sketch. There we are. Okay, uh, apply our material. We already use. We already have created material. It's the same one that we did just a minute ago. So we go to uh, tools. Apply material, and I believe it was my video or something, remote torque. 
yeah, video remote work. Apply to close this thing. Apply to that with the green check mark. It's done. And uh, we're going to go mesh it. We're going to go mesh it. Structure model creation. Now, there's no sense in using this because there's no solid element to solid object to be meshed. So I'm going to do empty mesh, FEM mesh. So I have to do that myself. All right, good. Notice that nothing is meshed. So we go here and use the surface quad mesh. Right there, that's the support, the parabolic, five millimeter, which is already what I have there. And then we say mesh. So I'm going to get my parabolic mesh there. That's pretty much it. So we're going to go, oh, wait, wait a minute. I have to define the thickness. Uh, so we go to properties, shell thickness of that 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 whole thing you can either select the yeah right there the, the fill and 10 millimeters all right good so now we're going to go to the uh, structural scenario creation we're going to use the mesh that you created okay and now to procedure static once again i'm not going to use the non-linearity there's really no sense in doing it here and then restraints clamp that end now if you're having a hard time picking these it could be because uh, uh some stuff are blocking this such as the sketch for example let me hide the sketch here see now it's picked it so we say okay and we go to loads. That's the whole purpose of this video. Remote torque. Remote torque. So right there. And uh, it doesn't even give me the option of selecting any point. I don't need to, but even uh, if I wanted to, there's no such choice. So this is about the x axis 50, 50 uh, Newton meter. Okay, good right there and uh, it's gonna work so let's go run it I'm not gonna do the model check scenario the simulation check I'll just go ahead, just run it uh, right away which is not a good strategy because sometimes those checks they give you stuff that are missing and, but in this case it's very simple I don't have a problem all right I should be getting the same level of stress, which is 300 uh, megapascal, and deflection should be 1.5, maximum deflection is 1.5 millimeter. That's what we got for uh, solid elements here. Very simple linear problems. Okay, first of all, look at the color. See, it says 3 e to the 8. Right there, you can see that. You can change the range of the legend so that it doesn't show you all this good stuff. But it is right, right there. You can see that. 3 e to the 8. See? 3 e to the 8. And the deflection should be 1 point. The maximum deflection should be 1.5. 1.5 millimeter. And that uh, wraps it up. Good luck.